All right. If cos alpha is equal to negative 3 over 5, and tan beta is 5 over 12, where alpha is in the second, in the third quadrant, and beta is acute. So let's try to first put this, which they've given us, on a quadrant. They've told us that alpha is in the third quadrant, right? So that means that it is here. So I've got a triangle like that. So a triangle that you make should always be related to the x-axis. I've always been mentioning that. So this is alpha. Okay. And then they've told us that cos alpha is negative 3 over 5. And you know that cos is given by what? How do you find cos? Okay. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Meaning that these three on top is going to be the adjacent. And the adjacent side is this one. Okay. And then the five is going to be the hypotenuse, meaning that this is the hypotenuse. Now you need to know that the hypotenuse is always positive. Like it's always positive. We don't care in which quadrant the angle is. That means that this negative that we're able to see here is because of the adjacent. Like something is on the negative x axis. So expect it to be negative. So let's find the opposite. How can we find the opposite? The opposite side. The opposite side is the one that the angle, the side that is opposite the angle. Mm -hmm. How do we find it? So we are going to say um, the, square, the square of the adjacent minus the square of the hypotenuse. This. Minus the square of the adjacent. Okay. So I should write like this. Uh huh. And then I write what? I minus. Minus. The root. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Then negative three in bracket. Like this. Right. Like this? I, I think it's best to put them all together like this and then get the root. This is wrong. So you're that's supposed saying, to... That's what I'm saying. You put them together. So I'm supposed to say that 5 squared minus 3 squared. So that is going to give you square root of... Uh, 5 squared is 25. 3 squared is 9. Square root of 16, which is going to give you a 4. So this is going to be 4. But remember, it is on the negative y-axis. What is the sign on the negative y-axis? Is this positive or negative? That's, uh, so, y-axis or x-axis? Negative. This is the y-axis. This, So this is going to be negative 4, okay? And then you've been told that alpha uh, beta is acute. When you hear of an acute angle, meaning that it is in the first quadrant. So it is here. Is it true? Acute angles are always in the first quadrant. Is it true? Yes, in the first quadrant. Okay. What of an uh, obtuse angle? In which quadrant? In, I'm not quite sure, but I think from 90 to 180. So you are going to see this angle in the second quadrant. Okay. Then you have got a reflex angle, which are uh, this one, the of this long one. That is going to be found either in the third or in the fourth quadrant. For reflex, you can either find it in the third or fourth. Or choose in the second. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, and then you've been told that tan beta is 5 over 12. And we know tan is given by adjacent over hypotenuse. Is it adjacent over hypotenuse or opposite over 
adjacent. So meaning that, yes, so that means that this is going to be five and then the two of that is adjacent, that is going to be here. So how can we find, how can you find this side? How can we find that? You don't know. So that is going to be the square root. We get the adjacent, we square it, plus the opposite, we square it. So this is going to be 144 plus 25 square root. That will give us 169. So that will give us 13 square root of 169. Okay, so that is going to be a 13. So I've just found 13 as the hypotenuse. Just get 12, you square it, plus 5, you square it, and so that you find your square root. Now we want to find cos alpha plus beta. What are we supposed to do for us to find cos alpha plus beta? What do you think? Wait a bit. Hmm. Uh, cos. Yes. Alpha. Yes. Cos. Please uh, read fast. Read fast. B of beta minus. Hmm. Sine alpha. Sine beta. Okay, so this is the the double angle formula for cos. And then we're going to substitute cos alpha. We've already been given cos alpha is here. That's negative 3 over 5. And then we're multiplying by cos beta. So we're going to go on the angle that has got beta. Why did I put them to be the same? Alpha is in the third quadrant. And then beta is acute. So this is actually beta. Okay. So cos beta, cos is given by opposite over, I mean adjacent over hypotenuse. So that is going to be 12 divided by 13. And then minus, we're going to say sine alpha. The sine of alpha, what do you think? What will be sine alpha? What will be sine alpha? Sign alpha is negative 2 over 5. Why negative? Oh, negative. Sorry, negative 4. I couldn't see the figure to cut it. Negative 4. Okay, negative 4 over 5. What of sign beta? Sign beta is in the 5 over. 5 over 13. Okay, 5 over 13, good. So this is going to give us, we multiply on top. Negative 3 times 12, that is negative 36. And then down, 5 times 13, to be 5 remainder, 1, 5 plus 1, excuse the 5. And then we're going to have this negative and this negative, that will give us a positive. So I've got 4 times 5, which is a 25 times 13, that is a 65. So since the bases are the same, just add the, I mean, since what is down is the same, just add what is on top, okay? So that is going to give us negative 36 plus 20. Is that a negative 16? And then negative 14, right? And then divide... Sixteen. Yes. Okay, negative sixteen divided by sixty five. So this is going to be the answer. I don't think there's a number that goes into sixteen and sixty five without a uh, remainder remaining. Is that okay? Okay, we can work out now these limits which are here.
if I, I compute the following limits and the first limit limit as x approaches 1 of x squared plus 4x minus 1. So these are rare cases and actually the very simplest cases that will be given. So for this one, how can you find this limit? What do you think? Oh. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Just get one, you put where there is X. Like that. So the answer is four. As simple as that. So that's the limit. You only think of other things. This is like this is the simplest if you've been given something like a straight something straight like that. It only becomes complex when it is a fraction. That's when things begin to complicate. Like this one, which is down. We want to evaluate this limit. Okay. The limit as x approaches 16 of x minus 16 divided by 4 minus the square root of x. So for this one, if you substituted 16 directly where there is x, you are going to find 0 over 0. And you don't want to do that. So what do you think? What are we supposed to do? Since we don't want to find 0 over 0, what should we do so that if we substitute 16, we will not get a 0 over 0? What do you think? Uh, uh, I, I think the denominator below should not be given to 0. So what should we do? What? I'm not quite sure though. So I'm going to conjugate multiply on top by 4 plus square root of x even down by 4 plus square root of x. Okay, so this is going to give you limit as x approaches 16. So multiply x times 4, that is going to be 4x. Then x times z square root that is going to be x square root of x. And then you also multiply negative 16 times 4. I'll just write negative 4. And then a 16. And then negative 16 times x. That will be negative 16 square root of x. Now down also multiply. Now down I'm multiplying uh, a difference of two squares. So just get the 4 you square it. That is going to give you 16. Minus, get the square root of x squared, that will just give you x, okay, like that. Is it okay? Yes, it is. All right, so that will give you limit as x approaches 16. So your aim is to make sure that on top you should also see something like 16 minus x. That should be your aim. You need to see 16 minus x. So I'm going to pair everything that has got. Let's see what am I supposed to even to pair up here. Because I need to remain with this, 16 minus x. So let me pair up those which have got roots alone. And those without roots, I also pair them alone. So I'm going to have 4x minus 4 with a 16. And then I've got plus x square root of x minus 16 square root of x divided by 16 minus x like that so this will give us limit as x approaches 16 we're going to factorize the first two we're going to remove a 4 we're going to remain with x minus 16 okay the next two we're going to factorize out the square root of x we're going to remain with x minus 16 okay divided by uh, 16 minus x at this point, are we okay? Are we together at this point? Yes. Okay, so from there now, I'm going to take limit as x approaches 16. So that is going to be 4 plus the square root of x 
and then x minus 16. Now, if you notice in the denominator, I've got 16 minus x. On top, I've got x minus 16. So down, I'm going to factorize out a negative. And then we're going to remain now with x minus 16, okay? Then this x minus 16 will cancel with x minus 16 there. It, has that confused you? Okay, so let me just write that again. So I'm taking it from here. We get those which are outside. We have got a 4. We also have the square root of x, right? And then the x minus 16 is, is, is the same on top, like in the two brackets. We write it like that. Is that okay? Now in the denominator, you have got 16 minus x, but on top you have got x minus 16. So I'm saying you're going to factorize out an x in the denominator. Instead of it being 16 minus x, it now becomes x minus 16. And then this x minus 16 will now cancel with this x minus 16. So you remain with limit as x approaches 16. This negative will come here, like it is in the denominator, so that will be negative. 4 plus the square root of x. Is this okay? And then substitute now where there is x, you put 16. So that would be negative 4 plus the square root of 16. So that is going to be negative 4 plus 4, which is going to give you negative 8. So this is the limit as you approach, as you approach 16 for this function. We are good? Yeah. All right. Now for the for the last one, this limit we have here. This limit is going towards infinity. And you need to know when you have got limits which are going towards infinity, like they are not that complex. Okay, limits which go towards infinity are, are easy. So we have got limit as x approaches positive infinity of 4 x squared minus 2 x plus 3 divided by x squared plus 3 x plus 1. Now if you look at on top and down, like just look on top and down, if you see if you see that the highest power on top and down is the same, just get the, and the limit is going towards infinity, just get the coefficient of the number with the highest power on top, and then get the coefficient of the number with the highest power down, divide them, then you have found the limit. So what do you think, what is supposed to be the answer from what you're able to see? Since it's going towards infinity and the powers are the same, up and down the highest powers, what do you think? What is supposed to be the answer? Yeah. That's four. Four, yes. Okay, now just to show the working, I'm going to say limit as x approaches positive infinity. So, you get the highest power that is x. So, divide the 4x squared by x squared, that will just be 4. Okay, minus, divide by the 2x by x squared, that will be 2 over x. Then plus divide 3 by x squared, that will be 3 over x squared. You are dividing everything by x squared. And then come down. You've got x squared divided by x squared, that will give you 1. You have got 3x divided by x squared, that will be 3 over x. You have got 1 divided by x squared, that will be 1 over x squared. Are we good like this? Yeah. At every point we are seeing and x we're going to put infinity, so that will be 2 over infinity plus 3 over infinity squared divided by 1 plus 3 over infinity plus 1 over infinity squared. So at every point where you see a number over infinity, that is always 0. Even infinity squared, okay, it, a number over infinity squared is still 0. So this is 0, this is 0, this is 0, this is 0. So all that you remain is 4 over 1, which is a 4.